you may allow me just to introduce uh, our first panelist, who needs no introduction, Excellency Ambassador uh, Ahmed Lorabi, who is the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Egypt, one of the biggest advocates of public diplomacy in Egypt, and also head of the uh, conference party. Your Excellency, if you would give me the honor to join me for a quick, brief uh, conversation. Thank you. Uh, I'll just make a quick uh, thank you to Awan um, Mabdaeen. I wish you all a very, very good morning and uh, a special thanks to uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and His Excellency, uh, Minister Nabil Fahmi, who unfortunately was unable to be with us here today, but because he's doing his job out in uh, Asia, trying to get us uh, you know, uh, a leeway into public diplomacy into Asia. Um, very specifically, I want to welcome all the students from the Egyptian Diplomatic Institute and, uh, of course, thank His Excellency Ambassador Al Al Hadidi for his support on this. Uh, of course, I want to thank all the ambassadors. I don't want to list all, all the names and all our speakers and all our guests today. Today, we are talking about an extremely important topic, and that is public diplomacy. Um, there is no better time for us to address such an important topic. Um, we have chosen the name Rebuilding Egypt's Public Diplomacy for this conference, and the reason why we use the word rebuilding is we are not reinventing the wheel. Egypt has always had a very strong public diplomacy program. Um, we have an advantage over countries around the world. Every child around the world, every young boy, every young girl, have been exposed to what Egypt is at a very, very young age through cartoons, through their schools, uh, through their kindergartens, through their Halloween costumes. Um, adults all around the world spend their evenings uh, watching the Discovery Channel National uh, Geographic uh, documentaries about the pyramids and the Sphinx and the temples and the mummies and the culture and the history of Egypt. There are millions of people that not only aspire to come to Egypt but dream to come to visit Egypt. Universities across the world have Egyptologists young children that aspire and dream to become Egyptologists. We've exported culture and knowledge through our television, through our film, through our art, through our music. Egypt is the Hollywood of the Arab world. For decades, Egypt has sent public diplomacy ambassadors to Africa through sheikhs from Al-Azhar, priests from the church, doctors and engineers, all across little villages in Africa. That used to happen. And today, what we need to do is not reinvent the wheel, but to revitalize Egypt's position throughout the globe through identifying a national identity and putting a cohesive strategy for public diplomacy that works hand in hand with the civil society, private sector, and the government. I will not speak more about public diplomacy when we have so many experts in the room, Your Excellency. Um, thank you for being with us here today. The topic is public diplomacy. Uh, when we were trying to put this conference together, we found that a lot of people lack the awareness of what public diplomacy or popular diplomacy is. Diplomacy al shabia diplomacy al amma even the definitions and the terms are somewhat vague for some people. The other thing, and I want to start on, on, on this question, is the Public diplomacy delegations that we have seen in the past maybe six months, since the 30th of June, um, and I've been hearing from the grapevine that despite the fact that they, they were successful and very much needed, uh, there was still no real coordination and cohesiveness between the foreign policy under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the actual delegations that were going out on public policy missions. Um, I know it's not a big difference, but what we're trying to achieve here today is to create and formulate and develop a cohesive, comprehensive national strategy for public diplomacy in whichever way that we can recommend. So Your Excellency, my question to you is how can we start putting together a more cohesive understanding of public diplomacy in the future? Well, um, good morning everybody. 
thank you, Ashra, for this uh, good introduction. Actually, you covered the subject now. I think we should adjourn the, <laughs> the, the conference now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Well, anyway, it is a great honor for me to be here today, this morning, uh, to address this important subject which is so near to my heart and to my mind. And I can claim that I am, as Ashraf said, I am one of the advocates of this uh, type of diplomacy, public diplomacy. I always believe this kind of indirect messages is more able to go through the hearts and the minds of the people. Well, let me start first by uh, uh, thanking the organizations of uh, El Mal uh, for this uh, good conference. And in the meantime, I would like to uh, greet uh, my colleague Al Al Hadidi and uh, Muhammad Qasim and Ali Siri uh, from the Foreign Ministry and also the young diplomats, which I think they will be a very good tools for the uh, future of the public diplomacy in Egypt. And we need them um, and to be uh, well uh, trained for this kind of diplomacy. Anyway, public diplomacy, in a very simple way, is a proactive and creative diplomacy, uh, targeting people, not governments, aiming to tackle problems arising from uh, mutual uh, lack of understanding or uh, distorted stereotypes or, I would say, negative imagery. And uh, from this uh, definition, I think the ultimate goal of the uh, uh, public diplomacy is to create a diplomatic and economic space for a country to work in and to influence the others through the public diplomacy. But we need tools, you know, to implement the public diplomacy, actually. We need uh, tools in order to embark on uh, an active public diplomacy. Egypt is uh, enjoying, I would say, many tools uh, because we are the land of uh, soft power and the land of tolerance and the land of uh, stability and prosperity. So all these things, I think, will help us in our endeavor in order to implement a very active public diplomacy to penetrate the hearts and the minds of the people abroad. The importance of public diplomacy now, I think after the 30th of June, is maybe more uh, essential and important uh, for our activities abroad. We need to address people, we need to clarify uh, many uh, things which dominate the uh, public opinion abroad and even uh, influence the uh, strategy and, let us say, the uh, diplomacy of certain countries. So the need now for this kind of public diplomacy is maybe more uh, important than any uh, time before. So I guess uh, after this uh, decision by the Prime Minister of Egypt, uh, Dr. Hazim Beblawi, to create a new committee from certain uh, ministers in order to tackle this issue, I guess this is a very good step. And uh, we already experienced you know, um, the, the way how to conduct our public diplomacy when I went with Dr. Zaya Hawass and Dr. Asam Ragab and many others to Germany recently. And we addressed people and we were trying to clarify the uh, political and the uh, uh, economic aspects and uh, all the uh, development which we are uh, facing now in Egypt in order to give them the right uh, picture about what's going on here. I think this kind of uh, movement is so successful and it will uh, bear a lot of uh, good fruits uh, in the near future. And I guess you can detect now that there is a real change in our, uh, I would say, uh, uh, in our image abroad. 
So the, public, the, ultimate, the ultimate goal of the public diplomacy is to rebuild the Egyptian uh, image abroad, and I think we are uh, moving ahead in that direction in a very successful way. Uh, Ashraf just mentioned the, uh, what he called it, uh, uh, I think uh, I can say about it, the, the, the population-centric foreign affairs. I, I guess this would be the right uh, the definition of the diplomacy uh, Shabaya. Uh, we were trying to complement, actually, the uh, role of the foreign uh, affairs, uh, uh, or let us say the official foreign affairs directions. We are not competing with the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, on the contrary, we are trying to complement its efforts. We are trying to send an indirect message to the others. When we are going abroad, uh, let us say, with different uh, uh, figures from Egypt, representing uh, parties, representing uh, uh, parliamentarian media, and uh, different, uh, I would say, the church and the Azhar. Also, they came with us, represented from the church and the Azhar. I think we were trying to uh, send a strong message to the others that all the Egyptian people from all aspects, all tribes, all uh, uh, parties, they are trying to send one message, that Egypt is on the right track for having a real democracy in the near future. We are trying to implement the roadmap uh, and we are trying to give the impression that there is a cohesion in this society and the uh, overwhelming majority of the people here in Egypt, they are supporting the roadmap and they are trying to implement it in a very uh, prudent way. What happened, uh, I think, after the Constitution, it will give also a very strong message. It will help the official diplomacy and also it will help the public diplomacy in its endeavor. And uh, as far as we are trying to implement the roadmap, I guess the, 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 uh, the, um, the people abroad will try to understand and will give us uh, the, um, the chance to implement our uh, future and to draw uh, the future of our children and grandchildren. So this is in, um, uh, in brief what I'm trying to do uh, we, uh, under the subject of, of the notion of a public diplomacy and maybe as, um, let us say, if we want to be uh, constructive in uh, this kind of meetings, we should uh, try to adopt a new idea or a new initiative so let us agree that maybe we can have uh, the initiative of establishing a public diplomacy association. I think Mohammed Kazim will be happy with this idea. And <laughs> uh, I guess this might be one of the uh, results of this uh, important conference that all of us as uh, civic society and uh, governments and uh, parties I think we should adopt this initiative, maybe uh, Dr. Al Al Hadidi also, because he is the head of the Diplomatic Institute. I think he has the platform to start uh, this kind of initiative. And uh, I will try to convince also Minister Nabil Fahmi. And I guess this would be uh, one of the good results of your conference. Thank you, Your Excellency. I, I completely agree with you that we do want to come up with, with some kind of conclusion today. My aspiration was going more you know, beyond an association. Definitely the private sector would be more than happy to, to participate in, in that. And that's the basis of today's conference is really bringing the private sector or civil society with the government. Um, my aspirations were something to the extent of a presidential committee for public diplomacy. I mean, I believe that's how important it is rather than just and association. What, what do you think of that, Your Excellency? Well, this is a very good ambition, I would say, uh, plan. Uh, let us start step by step. I think uh, we should all, uh, first give the people here in Egypt the chance to digest the idea uh, first. I mean, to have this kind of association. I think, you know, the, the, uh, the civic society will start to play an important role in Egypt now. And uh, I will uh, tell you that uh, all the initiatives coming, uh, let us say, for the future, I guess it will come from the civic society. And, but, of course, I like the idea, and 
let us give this uh, responsibility to the diplomatic institute, which I think always uh, it will be the, um, the, the, the right platform, you know, to conduct uh, very active uh, public diplomacy in the future. And uh, our association, which I just uh, mentioned, I guess it will provide the diplomatic institute with uh, the studies, the uh, training courses for the young diplomats and also maybe from uh, diplomats from different countries and uh, I guess this will be a very good initiative maybe some people will uh, grasp it uh, now and uh, try to implement it in the near future. Thank you Your Excellency. Since the 30th of June public diplomacy in Egypt I won't say has been accused but the direction has been uh, what we call reactive almost in the crisis management mode. Um, when do you believe that that is going to change where we stop being reactive and become more proactive? As public diplomacy, I think, you know, it should continue and, and it should become sustainable uh, in good times and bad times. And I think it's, it's, it's better or, or much more feasible to implement in better times than... So it's, we're still in a crisis management mode at this point. I think we're very uh, reactive to the situation um, and to the, the, the media bias in the sense that is happening uh, or happened abroad. Uh, when do you believe there's going to be a change from re uh, re being reactive to being a little bit more proactive? Um, public diplomacy is, uh, I think, for Egypt, it should be uh, the, uh, the uh, one of the main tools of our diplomacy. Uh, and it should not be connected to uh, certain challenges which we are facing now or in the future. I think this should be uh, the, uh, the mainstream of our diplomacy. Uh, and as I said in the beginning, we, uh, as Egypt, we have all the tools and all the instruments, you know, to conduct a very uh, deep and uh, um, strong public diplomacy. And as I said also, the ultimate goal of the public diplomacy is to widen the space uh, in front of Egypt, to widen the opportunities for having, you know, investors, tourism, uh, or tourists, and uh, many other things. So the impact of the public diplomacy, it, no, it is not just to improve the image of Egypt, but also to get the benefit of this, you know, improvement for the people of Egypt. Yeah, so your image abroad is so important for you and uh, so important to show that they are enjoying real stability and uh, there is real prosperity in order to uh, 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 give the, the, uh, an impetus to the, uh, the uh, uh, prospects of having you know, more investors, more tourists, more uh, uh, partners for development. You know, as we will uh, start, uh, uh, let us say, as we will finish our roadmap uh, by, let us say, uh, the mid of uh, 2014, Egypt will embark on the real battle, which is the battle of development and uh, stability and progress. And uh, for this battle, you need more public diplomacy. It is not just, you know, the, 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 to improve your image during, uh, or let us say, after the 30th of June. But starting from, let us say, the mid of 2014, Egypt will embark on a very ambitious plans in order to improve the situation in Egypt internally and economically, of course. So for all these targets, you need to improve your image abroad. And public diplomacy will be the right thing to improve their image of it. Your Excellency, today when, when um, public diplomacy delegations uh, leave abroad, um, when, when you do travel abroad very much, <coughs> like we as, as financial people, we pitch Egypt for foreign direct investment in a sense. Public diplomacy in the past couple of months has also been pitching Egypt's story, the, the reactive story that we're talking about. How do you see that message change after the uh, 15th or 14th, depending on the result, and we're all hoping for the result that we want. But how will that message change post the constitution, even for the president and, and the parliament, just the constitution? Well, I guess uh, our main task now is to have internal stability. This is, will be a very, a very strong message which we can export uh, to the people abroad. Uh, 
uh, our internal stability will be the key for everything, uh, you know, after the, uh, we'll have the parliamentary election and the presidential election. Without uh, real stability uh, in this society, without, uh, I would say, harmony and cohesion inside our society, uh, this will, uh, at least, I guess it will send a negative message to the everybody abroad. So our main task now is to try to guarantee the internal stability by all means, uh, but I think the Constitution will be the, the first document in order to pave the way for a real stability in this country. And after that, everything will uh, move on. But uh, uh, believe me, I, you know, I traveled a lot uh, during the last uh, few months to Morocco, Moscow, uh, China, Germany, Austria, uh, different countries. And the, uh, I, the first item in all, all news in these countries is Egypt. What's going on in Egypt? What kind of demonstrations we have and strikes and all these things. And I can tell you that there is a negative impact from all this uh, kind of news. And in the meantime, people they are wondering what happened to the Egyptians? Where is your smile? Where is your, uh, I would say, culture? And where is your dignity and uh, integrity? And all this kind of, uh, you know, uh, good things which we were enjoying uh, for the, in, in the past. So to rebuild the image of Egypt, it needs a lot of efforts. And I think these efforts will uh, be under the auspices of the foreign ministry and many other ministries. As I said, the, the Prime Minister already uh, created a new uh, committee from different ministers who are you know, responsible for this kind of uh, uh, policies abroad. And I think we should activate you know, the idea. And it is not just you know, a committee to be formed and that's it. No, we should put plans, practical plans, in order to implement the ideas. And we need it. For, uh, you know, to have a proactive, as I said in my, the beginning of my uh, introduction, a proactive diplomacy in this time. Your Excellency, another question. Um, we, we were talking about national image, the, the Egypt's image abroad, and that's what we're trying to improve at this point. Um, more importantly, I think post the 30th of June, is for us to identify our national identity that will create the image that we want. How, how would you define the difference between reinforcing national identity that was created post? Because I, I think a lot of foreign media and a lot of foreigners, they look at the image part of it, but they haven't been able to identify with the people of Egypt, 33 plus million people that were on the streets. There is a new sentiment, there is a new national identity in the sense in Egypt. How do you reflect that, the difference between the national image and the national identity? And they both go hand in hand if we're talking about public diplomacy. Well, the national identity, I think, it is still there and still in uh, you know, our hearts and even in our attitude uh, towards this country. And uh, you can see that uh, most of the uh, civilian movements now, they are trying to gather under one banner, uh, which is Egypt. And so uh, the national identity, we, did, we, we never lost you know, our identity at all. But uh, what we are trying to do now is to try to, uh, you know, to tackle the turbulence which we faced after the 30th of uh, June, or, uh, or let us say from the beginning of, the, after the 25th of January till now. The three, last three years, I guess, uh, the Egyptian society has suffered a lot uh, from the, you know, this kind of uh, indifferences and uh, even fragmentation and many, many, many things actually. And so the, we should have this kind of internal healing first. And uh, the internal healing, I guess, it will take a lot of time from us and a lot of efforts at the same time. And it needs, you know, uh, all efforts to join uh, together in order to achieve this internal healing. The, you know, we need our internal uh, peace uh, now. We need uh, to uh, learn how to listen to each other and to digest the ideas from each other. But uh, unfortunately, what we are facing now is, I would say, is a social disease. And this social disease, I guess, it will take a lot of time in order to be tackled and uh, to have the right remedy for this uh, disease. Uh, so the 
Egypt should start you know, from now to uh, have, uh, an, uh, or let us say, to improve the internal image uh, in front of the people abroad. And this will uh, take uh, a lot of efforts and it needs you know, a joint effort from everybody. Your Excellency, um, I'll make the, 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 the final question. We've taken up the 20 bit of our time. Uh, I, can, I can hear you talk for another three hours. There's no, no, there's no, but I, I, I think I gave you my paper concerning yes. this subject. Yes. I guess and I like to be part of the documents of this conference, and uh, I would be so honored if it would be uh, part of the publication of this conference. Um, Your Excellency, two questions. Uh, uh, just one regarding uh, reach, resources. Um, I mean, it is so, so difficult for us to be able to put together a public diplomacy or, or put together public diplomacy efforts to start off with when we don't have the resources or the means of reach. I'll give you a very small example. Uh, Russian TV, RTL, English, Arabic, BBC World, English, Arabic, other languages, CNN, in all languages. You can. When we don't even have the means, if we want to actually broadcast this specific session in this language on any Egyptian satellite channel, none of them carry a language that anybody understands outside of Egypt and the Arab world. Sir, how, did, how do we, as part of this association, as part of the public diplomacy efforts, put pressure on the government to open up an international la language uh, channel, satellite channel, that actually reaches people, not like Nile, Nile International that was actually just being broadcast on Nile TV, which made absolutely no sense uh, to, to any normal person, uh, because we're watching ourselves talk to each other. The, this, this happened, Your Excellency, on the 13th of June, what we saw on Egyptian satellite channels that we all watched, um, very simply, um, all the channels started to translate the broadcast into English. It was horrible English, horrible translations. Um, very, something as, as significant as the banner that was at the constitutional uh, press conference, the international global constitutional press conference. I mean, these are things that hinder the public diplomacy efforts that we're trying to put together. Just small image parts. Fa no, I, I double check. <laughs> I double check. But. How, how, can, how can we pressure the government to give us the tools that we need to be able to reach people through information technology, through satellite, through television, the real reach, what, what others, what Chinese CCTV is doing? What, what are your comments on that? Well, information and media, of course, they are so important to any, I mean, to conduct the right uh, public diplomacy. And uh, one of the ideas uh, I was always advocating also to have an uh, Azra satellite uh, channel uh, to broadcast the uh, right Islam to uh, inside Egypt and even outside Egypt in different countries. Actually, part of uh, the efforts done by the Ministry of uh, Waqf uh, during the last year is that they already translated uh, the Quran and many other uh, you know, good books about Islam in different languages. And uh, I still remember my debate with the Minister of Interior of Germany um, many years ago when I offered him um, a nice, actually, uh, books in German language about Islam. And uh, he, uh, I would say, I would claim that he changed his mind after he uh, had his books and had the opportunity to read it. Uh, so, yes, media and information, they are so important uh, in our say battle or the future battle uh, for uh, development and building in this country and uh, but uh, the end you know every step now in our recent life it needs money uh, if you are talking about political parties yes we need money if we uh, money we, if you are talking about information and media it means also money so you should have the uh, the resources in order to uh, finance this kind of activities, but I think one of these things, and it's so important as you said, to have an international uh, TV satellite uh, uh, channel uh, to address, uh, you know, our uh, 
to address the others with our, all our you know, news and information which we are uh, having here in this country. So I think this is a very important step and I hope that uh, this conference, this will be one of the conclusions which will uh, you know, produced by this conference. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, uh, this is my final question and it is basically just to have you close up the session with your final recommendations and suggestions on how can we move forward post this conference to develop a strategic national strategy for public diplomacy that everybody is going to abide by where we have one message to the world. Well, first of all, we should trust uh, that we have all the tools and the instruments to, have to conduct the best public diplomacy in this world because Egypt is well equipped with the um, many things actually. We have the history, we have the civilization, we have culture, we have al Azhar, we have the church, we have our arts, uh, we have uh, even our movies. I remember when I was in, uh, in Morocco also and uh, Tunisia, uh, the, the first thing people asking you about is the, your uh, artists and movies. So uh, the, our arts is so important. So and the music, uh, Muhammad Qasim, uh, when he will launch his uh, uh, culture of peace uh, initiative. Uh, I think he is using music uh, and this is a very good and important tool and uh, I'm always, you know, uh, supporting his activities many years ago. Even. So, we are ready to have the best public diplomacy, but I think we, our, uh, I would say, officials should believe on that. I guess uh, the, the needs for public diplomacy is now increased after the 30th of June, and I think our officials now start to realize that this is one of the good things, and it will not cost us any, uh, I would say, uh, efforts or money, because we are well equipped, as we said, about, uh, for all the, the instrument for public diplomacy. So I would like to thank you again, and I'm really happy to be part of this uh, conference, because as I'm always saying, public diplomacy is my baby. And if you visit the Humboldt University uh, uh, website, you will find that they established uh, uh, one year diploma uh, at Humboldt University in Germany uh, under my name, because I was, uh, I claimed that I was conducting public diplomacy for uh, seven years during my uh, post in Germany and I think it was successful and it has or it had a great impact on the people there. So thank you again and uh, I wish you a good conference and fruitful results. Your Excellency, thank you. Um, as always, it's a pleasure to hear you. It's an honor to have you with us here again as the Godfather of Public Diplomacy, as I'd like to call it. Um, and we're always looking forward to your leadership and leadership of everybody here, passing on their experiences to the new generation, and hopefully, cohesively, together, we can create a strategy, a national strategy for Egypt and public diplomacy. Your Excellency, thank you once again.